this is the Provoke Prawn, and I want to talk to you about the Corsair's IQ Link system and whether it's worth purchasing. I want to show off some of the interesting things about it and talk about the highlights and features and give you a review of the device and whether it's worth purchasing. Now, this is an interesting setup, which uses a tiny little control box seen here to control up to 14 different devices in your case. Now, I've done a few different videos on this now, but the main highlight for me was being able to shed all the cables and boxes that you can see on the left on the 5000D airflow in favor of a much tidier build. The system is theoretically really simple and straightforward to put together, and I've done a detailed wiring guide on how it works and how to set it up. But essentially, it's a daisy chainable system that all connects together using the controller and a few different cables that plug into the fans and the radiator and allow you to easily connect everything up and then control it with Corsair's IQ software. And I'm going to show you some of the controls and what you can do later on because it's a very intelligent system that allows not only for control of the RGB, but also the power of individual fans. So you can actually have fans spinning at different speeds in the system, individual lighting for each of them and more. You also drop all the cables from the pump head so you can see you've got a much cleaner installation. There's no cabling to worry about there. It's all controlled from the radiator and wiring wise, it's fantastic. These fans are also fancier potentially than Lee and Lee's fans because that's what a lot of people said in a previous video, but Lee and Lee beat Corsair to it. Yes, but these are more intelligent because each fan has its own individual temperature sensor on it. Each fan in the system is also controllable in terms of speed and RGB lighting, individually adjustable and manageable with an IQ. I'll show you that in a second. There are, however, some downsides and stupid things to this system, in my opinion. For example, if you want to add in a single fan to your system, you need to buy a cable kit. So for additional cables, you can see the additional cables here. You can purchase them separately or in a big kit that includes multiple cables. But if you buy a single fan on its own, which, by the way, is very expensive, you don't get a cable to connect it to the system, which is daft. So you actually have to spend more. And that is one of the main gripes that most people will have about this system is that it's very expensive. All the different parts are expensive and I'll leave links in the description so you can see how much they are in your region. But they're stupidly expensive, which will put a lot of people off. So if you wanted to fill the case with fans and the cooler and extra cables that you'd need to connect it all, you're going to end up spending a small fortune for the sake of a clean build, but also highly controllable. It is fair to say this is highly controllable and a very nice looking system. But I do personally have some other complaints about it that I'll get to later on. Things that could be improved, but it is early days. Now, once you've got it set up in your system and all connected up, you'll see you can go through the same sort of logic that you would normally with a Corsair product. So you can see I'm in the early stages here, I'm in on Corsair's IQ software and each of the fans has its own individual color to let you know where it is in sequence in the case. So you can then program it in IQ and reposition the fans. So you can see the QX RGB fans here ordered in there. You can just drag them around and set where they are in the case in the software. So the wiring is really simple and straightforward. And then the sort of understanding of that logic in IQ and in Windows is really easy too. So you can just reposition the fans in the software and then you can control the RGB lighting for each. And you have an understanding of where they are in the case and how that's going to impact things. Because when you're adjusting the performance, for example, you'll need to tweak those things. There's also a map of the device in the hub where you can reposition things as well. So you can tell IQ where they are in the system. And this helps you understand what's going on in the system as well to get an idea. And it's a bit weird. For example, my front bottom fan was fan seven and then fan six, five working its way upwards. And then I had to reposition the fans on the radiator end at the rear of the case in the software as well, just to tweak things. But this sort of intelligence, I mean, all of this is just controlled by one controller and it's all seen by IQ at a glance. And it's so much easier than having multiple commander cores or commander pros in your system, not just from a wiring perspective, but also from a control perspective too. So obviously you've got a lot of RGB lighting potential in here. Obviously I've got some lighting accent triangles in here as well as a separate thing. You've also got a pump head which has the RGB on it and the fans individually controllable. And as you'd expect, there's absolutely loads of RGB syncing options and RGB lighting in here. If you go into the lighting settings on the fans, you can choose from the lighting link 
set up, for example, and then get the colors to display across all of them. There's also the option to use Corsair's murals, which allows custom lighting across everything as well. But you can see you can choose from a variety of different ones. You can create layered lighting effects. You can choose quick lighting zones. You can do hardware lighting, so get that to run when Corsair's IQ is not running. Or you can just click on the murals button and turn the lighting on across everything. And you can choose individually what goes where and what's what. So there's loads of customization in here, but one of the nicest things is you've got less devices to worry about. The link system hub's in there, but it's less focused on that. That's more the device level. You've just got the fans and the pump to control separately and then just choose from the various different lighting effects in there. So one of the things I wanted to demonstrate is the fact that you can individually control each of the fans. Now, obviously you could change the lighting on the previous system to do this, We've now labeled these one, two, and three. So these are the colors, blue, green, and yellow that I've chosen just for demo purposes. But what you can then do is you can also go in and select the fan speed for each of those fans and change them so you can have different fans spinning at different speeds. Obviously, these are intake fans as well. But if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see we've got individual temperature readouts for each of the fans because of the temperature sensors that are built into them. So you can actually see intake and exhaust fans, what temps are going in and out of your case and get an idea of that and adjust the performance accordingly. So obviously I wanted to benchmark and test how the performance got on. So I ran Cinebench R23 and Heaven Benchmark, hardware monitor and IQ all at the same time as well as recording. And I wanted to see what the performance was like. Now I'm running a Ryzen 7 CPU, which is designed to actually run at a hot temperature when it's under load so it looks like it's not doing very well at 95 degrees but actually the system temperatures are pretty good and the performance is really good as well and you will note that the gpu is actually running cool but again if you look at iq you can see that the temps are actually interesting on the fans themselves so 27 degrees you know, the front fans are actually less because they've got the cold air going over them from the room or cooler air anyway whereas the exhaust fans and the ones in the rad are a little bit hotter. But it's really interesting to be able to see this data and to adjust it. Obviously, it's going to make the system more intelligent as well. Now, I will say that it did still get quite noisy, and that's always the way with Corsair fans at the top end. When they're really ramped up, they do get hot. But you can see the GPU temperature is just 59 degrees C at the max, which is pretty good, to be fair. And then the cores around 95 at the top end. And that's just Ryzen for you, but it's just running really hot. But good performance all round and a really good looking system in a number of different ways. Very clean to install, easy to set up, as I've shown in the wiring guide and the other videos, but very, very expensive. Now, beyond expensive, I think the other thing that's important to mention is the fact that the pump head only has RGB at this point. So you've only got RGB on there and then the Corsair logo, which seems kind of backwards. When we look at something like the LCD upgrade kit, which has that display on it that allows you to do the various different GIFs. So this is for the Elite Capilix coolers. So Corsair's got these advanced displays on their coolers where you can do all sorts of things, but you can't get that with the new IQ link system, at least at not yet. So you pay a lot more money for something that isn't quite as fancy, which is a bit weird. Anyway, check out the other videos linked in the description and links to the products down below. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.